Between the exposition and the action, these movies failed to find the right balance. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 action movies that needed more action. Yeah, back away from the wall! For this list, we're looking at films that appeared to fall into the category of action, but didn't come off as advertised. We are not saying that all of these entries are bad films, but they did leave us wanting a little more bang for our buck. I'll say the names, and you say yes or no. Number 10, The Gunman. And you're the last objective. You're the last real threat on the table. For an action film that references firearms in the title, one might expect the guns to be ablaze in here. That is not the case in Pierre Morel's film starring Sean Penn. We're gonna go hunting from here. Hunting for what? Whatever's in season, I just need to shoot something. Maybe it's the French influence that seemingly bogs down the first hour of exposition. Or perhaps Morel hoped to differentiate the gunman from his action-packed film, Taken. I will look for you. I will find you. And I will kill you. But as the backstories are established, there's little to smile upon or to further reel viewers in. In other words, the gunman is a little too smart for a supposed action film. Or at least it's trying to be. And so, the title misrepresents the actual content of the film. You are the designated trigger, Jim. I had a feeling. Number 9, Fantastic Four. It's who we are now. Maybe it's who we're meant to be. While the previous Fantastic Four movies were far from phenomenal, they did at least aim to entertain their target audience. Surf's up, metalhead! For the 2015 reboot, however, a spectacular ensemble cast sadly felt the wrath of a boring superhero narrative. Victor, we're not gods. We're just people. And we are stronger together than we are apart. One can't necessarily blame director Josh Trank for taking the more serious approach with the fun-loving series. But then again, one could also choose to never return to the Fantastic Four franchise after this troubling and utterly boring fiasco. All we know is that they are dangerous and powerful, which makes them extremely valuable to the guys who run this place. Whereas fans expected humor and excitement, Fantastic Four delivers a mundane collection of tedious conversations. You guys sure you're in the best shape to be doing this? Oh yeah. 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 Number eight, Dirty Harry. You've got to ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? Okay, so the cultural influence of this Clint Eastwood classic has been established time and time again. But that's not to say that Dirty Harry couldn't be improved. Have you been following that man? Yeah, I've been following him on my own time. Stemming from the infamous Zodiac killings, the film takes a smart and procedural approach, but the appeal is more in its style rather than its heavy use of action tropes. Let's see the gun. My, that's a big one. Sure, there is some clever dialogue and a gritty 70s visual aesthetic, but the thriller could easily bore viewers that are more concerned with traditional genre themes than psychological studies. Get the hell out of the way, hammerhead. As a cop film, it's got a place in history. As a pure action film, though, it can use a bit more action. Now you know why they call me Dirty Harry. Every dirty job that comes along. Number seven, The Hunger Games, Mockingjay Part One. I never asked to be in the games. Box. Come I never asked to be the Mockingjay. Box. Just wanted to save my sister. Given the success of the franchise's first two films, not many expected the third installment to be such a flop. In all honesty, it wasn't. At least not completely, especially considering the star power of Jennifer Lawrence. But do you see that? Fire is catching. And if we burn, you burn with us! Yet, Mockingjay Part 1, with all of its themes of revolution and retribution, is essentially just a primer for the finale. Whichever Dean. It's the things we love most that destroy us. While there are certainly moments of action, the narrative involves more exposition and dialogue and less Katniss doing what she does best. Sure, loyal viewers knew what to expect, but the film left many with an itch that still needed to be scratched. Are you fighting Katniss? Are you here to fight with us? I am. I will. Number six, Superman Returns. My heart, my, my palpitations, they're gone. What did you do? I didn't do anything. When it comes to superhero updates, there's a certain sense of comfort that emerges through nostalgic direction. Or, in the case of Superman, it feels good to be reminded of the good old days. You wrote that the world doesn't need a savior. 
but every day I hear people crying for one. Despite the visual polish of Brian Singer's Superman Returns, the film harkens a bit too far back to the past rather than catering to the more action-oriented crowd. Didn't your dad ever teach you to laugh before you leave? <sighs> it's a tough balance to find, as less talented filmmakers often try too hard to be original and fresh. There's plenty to enjoy with this Clark Kent flick, but it's steeped much more in humanism than the pure action that many moviegoers expected. Is that right with you, Clark? Swell. Number five, The International. Sometimes a man can meet his destiny on the road he took to avoid it. Directed by the man behind Run Lola Run, undoubtedly an action thriller classic, this film explains itself to viewers rather than stepping on the gas. Sometimes the hardest thing in life is to know which bridge to cross and which to burn. I'm the one you burn. Like many other modern action flicks, The International relies more on forced dialogue than giving people what they want, which is action. Of course, the troubling acting performances themselves don't help much, but the inherent problem is that Tom Tikva's film didn't come through on the promise of its trailers. The ingredients are here. But once again, the sense of faux sophistication smothers the action aesthetic. I know that there has to be a way to bring down this bank. And you are gonna help me. Number four, Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End. Cut out his tongue! Shoot him and cut out his tongue, then shoot his tongue. And trim that scraggly beard. For any action film, big budget or small, a sense of pacing is crucial. Yet, when the third installment of Johnny Depp's Disney franchise hit theaters, viewers were snoozing more than they were losing themselves in excitement. Keep telling yourself that, darling. It's not that Depp and director Gore Verbinski didn't know their craft. It's that viewers expected swashbuckling and thrills, and not Captain Jack Sparrow just talking to himself. My pain, huh? There is action, of course, and that's the fundamental driving force of the franchise. Yet there's simply not enough in this flick, especially considering the nearly three-hour runtime. Die! Oh. Number three, The Hunt for Red October. I think that Captain Mancuso has found the Red October. After a decade full of iconic 80s action flicks starring Van Damme, Stallone, and Schwarzenegger, this movie didn't quite pack a punch like so many expected. What's his plan? His plan? Russians don't take a dump sign without a plan. When the central theme of your action film revolves around a conflict between the Soviets and the Americans, there better be a steady amount of said action. Unfortunately, The Hunt for Red October is full of suspense, but not necessarily excitement. You're afraid of our fleet. Hmm? Well, you should be. Personally, I give us one chance in three. No more tea, anyway. So, while the plot may look good on paper, the visuals and narrative did little justice to the genre, perhaps raising more questions than anything else. Colton, stay where you are. Do not attempt to submerge or you will be fired upon. Nevertheless, seeing Sean Connery on the silver screen is always a thrill, despite that <clears throat> Russian accent. And when we are finished, the only sound they will hear is our laughter. Number two, Miami Vice. This was too good to last. Based on the iconic television series, this big screen adaptation took more of a stylistic approach instead of building on the fun of its predecessor. Eddie? No! Under the guidance of Michael Mann, though, the risk seemed justified to some. While the neo-noir vibe and emphasis on dialogue might have pleased critics for the most part, when it comes to the genre, the film strayed heavily from pure action. We didn't come down here to audition for business. Business auditions for us. That may not necessarily be a bad thing, especially with the likes of Colin Farrell and Jamie Foxx in lead roles, but there's an obvious disconnect from the original source material. Why do I get the feeling everybody knows we're here 15 blocks out? Because everybody knows we're here 15 blocks out. Miami Vice thus requires a second viewing, as it's more of a character study than a shoot 'em up escapade. Just cash out and get out. Yeah? Yeah, as far and as fast as you can. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable, or in this case, dishonorable mentions. What's with all the green? Green is the color of will, the Guardian's harnessed will, because it's the strongest source of energy in the universe. I see it! Come on, I gotta get up there. That's it, that's it, guys, yes! I'm fighting now! Hi, Andy! Hi! Andy! Come on, you stay with me! You're my hostage! Number one, Mad Max. There's words out there, I have to get you. It's 
good jockeys. Yeah, no mad trash. Mm. Well, I'll add it to my threat collection. As the world evolves, so do the needs and wants of moviegoers. This is evidenced by the spectacular success of 2015's Mad Max Fury Road, arguably one of the best action flicks of modern times. Remember me? <laughs> Yet, back in 1979, the original Mad Max was more of an acquired taste, partially because it had the relatively unknown Mel Gibson in the lead. You really expect me to go for that crap? Once again, the amateur filmmaking style displayed here is most definitely not a bad thing, but Mad Max takes some time to get revved up. And so, once George Miller stepped back into the director's chair over three decades later for the fourth installment, he understood how to speed things up for a more accessible, more focused action film narrative. <laughs> do you agree with our list? Which action flick do you think was a bit, or a lot, dull? I don't know. I really don't. For more cinematic top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Well, I hope this experience hasn't put any of you off flying. Statistically speaking, it's still the safest way to travel.